son. Where'd you find this? Later. You are now listening to Podcast 42, the world's most popular, inaccurate, and sometimes squirrel dray telling of pop culture history. We, uh, pre, uh, pre did everything on that one. That one was a good one. Yeah. Perhaps wants a Confederate microphone. And he needs no, a he wants stand. a microphone stand that has the phone holder attachment to it. But then I was that willing to check switch out seats. Tinder and Grinder while he's podcasting. It's called a phone mount. Yes. I'm yeah, the one so you can one. mount your phone. <laughs> I have one in my car. Do you, <laughs> you like me to go mount get your it? Phone? No, you don't have to go get it. But even though our phones are mounted, like mine's not even on. It's just there. I'm I also could have bought everyone right costumes if you had answered my message earlier. I said, Snapchat over. I said I'm good. I yeah, said I'm dressing as Ford. We right. had a discussion. I could have sworn weeks ago about this, months ago. And you said about knows? this, we would all be wearing costumes. Okay, well, you wore a costume. Do you have a costume next week for Pokemon? Uh, we, there was no discussion about a Pokemon costume. Well, you just said costumes every week. Are we going to dress in costumes? So I would assume that that means when well, we talk about... we're not, since I'm the only one in costume. My right cat has I... Sith robes on, on my shirt. So... I have killer clowns from outer space. Speaking of costumes, <laughs> it's time for the show. Welcome to Podcast 42. Yay! I'm Christopher DeVos. I'm Nicole Fasone. I'm J.L. Tros. I'm Faraz. Hey! And you're dressed <laughs> as what? I am dressed in Sith robes because I'm the only one that came dressed for the occasion. And why are you dressed in Sith robes? What are we talking about? Today we're discussing politics in the galaxy far, far away. Star Which Trek? galaxy? No, Star, Star Trek Galactica? is a relevant ga- I hate you. <laughs> <laughs> is this Battlestar Galactica? Oh. That would be, that'd be a good one, too. Are we doing Firefly? I love Firefly. Okay, I meant I Star Wars. Too. These are all good points, JL. I meant Star Wars. All right, well, before we get into that, let's open up the beer cooler. Yeah. yeah. JL Beer Cooler. It's cooler than you think. JL Beer Cooler. It's cooler than you drink. It's cooler than you drink. Yeah. What, what'd you bring? I brought one of my favorite breweries, Goose Island. It's a limited release. Fulton Street Blend Coffee Ale. Where's Goose Island from, JL? Chicago. Oh, wonderful. Now, um, I just kind of glanced at the label, and uh, I didn't, you know, it was a sideways glance, so it looked like a bowl of spaghetti at first. <laughs> <laughs> what? <laughs> but it's a coffee cup, yeah? yeah? Yeah. Okay. Surrounded by all the uh, containers that they brew the beer in. If this was a bowl of spaghetti, I would have given the label a six. But it's not, so... It gets a two. It gets a two, but it's... I think a spaghetti beer could be a very fascinating <laughs> beer. Well, see, I what, I like, what I like about the label is it's a coffee cup, but you can also see the the big things that the beer is brewed in. What are those called? Nope. Vats? Vats. Uh, sure. Thank you. Yeah, <laughs> see, I, I had to improve on my vocabulary, yeah, obviously. I know, I know. Respirator, <laughs> vats. <laughs> Turn signal. After my <laughs> oh, I, had, no, I know how to use that one. The blinky thing. Unlike the everybody blinky. else in Florida, I know how to use my turning signal. After my first sip here, I think this one's either going to grow on me or I'm going to hate it. Ooh, I like first it. sip, I hate it, but I think that it always happens. grow on me. Yeah. Oh, did you You're all sip this? A face yes. We all sip this already? I think I really like it, Take but a sip I and then the we rate it at the end of the episode it. after yeah. we've been able to drink the whole thing. Mull it over. How we feel about it. First thoughts? I do not have a mullet over. It's called a comb over. Raz is speechless after his first sip. I am so happy about that. That means I won with the beer of the week. Mm. He's putting it down. Okay, right. so Star Wars politics. Yep. Before yes. Before we start, we got pop quiz. <gasps> what? What? But, uh, can you grab the the paper out? I meant to get oh, to do that beforehand. We did not prep for this. We did not prep very well. <laughs> I'm not ready. Well, Raz is passing out the stuff. This pop quiz is called. Can I just write on the back of my paper? No. I don't care. Got official notepads. I don't need But one. I don't have a notepad. Oh, you, I don't need it. You, I, 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 no, I you need it. Right. I don't need it. Oh, you, right. You guys need pens? I have pen. I just gave I you like. one. You think this would be your first show? Faraz, you have my notepad. Oh, I'm so sorry. They're kind of coded <laughs> to the mics. They're coded. 
Are oh. they? No, they're not. Mine is green. Yep, you're they're color coded. No, but my mic is blue. Well, that is my handwriting. Oh my goodness. <laughs> okay. Can I have a pen, please? Do I have a pen? Anymore? I asked you guys if you need pens. All right. I always need a pen. Back to the pop quiz. Pop this quiz. Is only an hour show. Pop. <laughs> this pop quiz is called. Sometimes Sith happens to the best of us. <laughs> or you can't spell Palpatine without the word pal. Oh, Chris. You're like so that punny. One. That's Thank good. You, it took me uh, five days to figure out how, how to name this pop quiz. <laughs> I like it. This will be five knowledge facts on Star Wars politics in order of the easiest to the hardest to test us and the audience. And you score yourselves one point for each correct answer. I scored zero. Now these might all <laughs> these might all be hard. <laughs> we haven't even started yet. How do you have It's getting warm in here. Can I take off the hood? Is that But then you're not in costume anymore and then it's you're gonna be just like the rest of us. Here. Oh. Take off your Sith robes. Or I could just take off the pants so the robes are more comfortable. No, keep the pants on. <laughs> <laughs> Question one well, of the pop I'm quiz. I'm breathing all Darth Vader heavy here as he takes <laughs> off his robe. Question one. What movie did Palpatine die in? Oh, Damn. we don't answer out loud. I was about no, to shout the answer to that one. Down. What movie did Palpatine, Palpatine die in? Did or, I watch this one already? Or Palpatine. Yeah. Are you, are you joking? <laughs> yes. No, no, there's no looking across the table for him. I'm not looking I'm not across giving her the a hint. Do we want to know? The, did you say episode? What movie? Yeah, it is um, a, can I give the episode? Yeah, number, I put down, like, I just put the episode. Okay. Well, Does it matter? the movie time. Uh, Can I just do the abbreviations? Sure. I'm so glad you and I are on the same page for us. <laughs> are you ready, Nicole? Go for it. Question two. What is Palpatine's home planet? Oh. Question two. What is Palpatine's home planet? Why are you looking at me? Because like, well, I'm drawing next, a blank right I'm now. I'm for the next question. You're, you're already <laughs> have it? I'm waiting. <laughs> what are you <laughs> saying? <laughs> <laughs> Remember, you must put down an answer. I have an answer. Okay. I don't know if it's right. Yeah, it's still right. No, I'm good. I'm good. Question three. What is Padme's death caused by, according to the medical droid? What is <laughs> oh my Padme's God. death caused by, according to the medical droid? The medical droid that was working to say it could because she died of this. I think it was a she, the droid. Uh, she died of this. So, so the droid. Was as a, RC, the Transformer, Because you said he, the, the droid. How do you know if you, it's a he or she? Because well, it had a female voice. Okay. Did it have droid boobs? No, it was a floating <laughs> droid. It didn't have... Okay. <sighs> Question four. Palpatine's death created a force nexus. What is a force nexus? Palpatine's death created a force nexus. What is a force nexus? I think you may actually get me with this one. All right. I've, wow. Yeah, yeah, Holy yeah, yeah, shit. Yeah, 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 yeah. Um, I got Faraz. I got Faraz. He still has his pants on, but I got him. Force Nexus. It is not a type of phone. It's not a type of phone. And five. Palpatine had raised an army of clone bodies for himself on what planet? Palpatine raised an army of clone bodies for himself. You should know this one, Nicole. To use for loading the dishwasher and. Can you repeat the question doing without. The laundry. Yeah. Palpatine had raised an army of clone bodies for himself on what planet? I can't believe I'm going to get the second one wrong. I'm drawing a blank on the planet. Oh, JL. I know. Hint, the second one is a planet that you should know, and the last one is a planet you probably don't know. I wouldn't have known. <laughs> don't worry. I'm just giving random. Okay. Can I give a better hint? Sure. Both are featured in EA's Battlefront 2. I don't know. Um, I haven't played Battlefront 2 since the uh, um, last time we played. Yeah, um, me neither. It was a waste of money. I, I, what? I don't remember. My heart's too I can't, too I can't even look it. through this to like figure out the... I don't no. know. I don't know. You can't look through the script. I'm not looking. But the answers aren't in there. Okay, question one. What movie did Palpatine die in? Nicole? I originally it's put... Scarface. I originally put <laughs> Empire no, Strikes like Back. Close. My second choice was Return of the Jedi. Your second choice was much better. Yes. <laughs> Do you agree? Return of the Jedi? I put Star Wars Episode <laughs> Six: The Return of the Jedi. Return of the Jedi is correct. I'm not gonna lie; I did have Episode Six, and there is my original <laughs> answer too. What is Palpatine's home planet? Jar 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 Binks' backyard. Oh, it came uh, back yes, to you. Actually, that is it is. I it can't is remember correct. the name of the planet. It came back. <laughs> oh, Nicole, Coruscant. <laughs> You went through the script. I did not. No, I didn't. Okay. She had That's the only... She totally went through the script. I, and I, 
<laughs> I see curse on there, which is all I needed to know how to spell it to write it down. Okay. But I, it was just the only planet that I recognized the name of. And I'm like, I guess we'll go with that. Neatness and spelling counts. Faraz, what is the <laughs> it answer? Doesn't. Naboo. Naboo. Which many people that aren't Star Wars fans get mixed up with somewhere that's in either India, Pakistan, <laughs> or the Middle East. <laughs> how do you know that? Because <laughs> people at work oftentimes mistake me from either of those places. Oh, okay. <laughs> Even though I sometimes say I'm from Naboo. Okay. <laughs> Good to know. That's also fishbowl fact. So you, I'm you really upset that, that I could not that remember up. that planet name right now. <laughs> oh, I should have figured that out because he's oh. in the same places as uh, Amidala. Well, that was just me not paying attention. Right, I wouldn't have known it either. Number three, what is Padamine's death caused by, according to the female medical droid? Nicole. Explosion? <laughs> no. Fail. <laughs> Broken heart. Yes. What did you put for us? Sorrow, pain, and ultimately a broken heart. Yes, correct. I'm remember, not up to that yet. Yes, it doesn't get a matter pass. how many times you watch it, you still just sit there and go, are you shitting me right now? <laughs> <laughs> And the sorrow and pain I was describing was a prequel trilogy. Yes, yeah, so you you went above and beyond in the answer, so you, you get an extra. What? I think he should get an extra point for <laughs> that because I think it? that was the exact verbiage from it. You can cash <laughs> in your points for uh, podcast forty two merchandise. Yes, like Palpatine's socks. Palpatine's death created a force nexus. What is a force nexus, bra? I have a burst of raw force energy. Um, kind of, yeah. Yeah. Oh, I got the backstory of Snoke that they never really explained. <laughs> um, oh, that's that's good too. It's like this vacancy, this Nicole? this power vacuum. Yeah. I put a black hole. N- no. <laughs> yes, kind of, kind of. You're hey. Close. And then that Snoke showed up. Close. It's an unusual convergence of dark side force energy capable of tearing apart the fabric of time and space. That, that's a black everyone, hole. Yeah, everyone danced around it. Yeah. That's what the a- heck? Give yourself points. Yeah, I'm, I'm not taking, keeping score. I'm taking those points. <laughs> Palpatine had you're not keeping score. How are you? Because uh, I'm going to lose. Nicole, come Palpatine on, you're a scorekeeper. Army of clone bodies for himself on what planet, Nicole? Uh, it's something that begins with a G, but I can't remember. The G, no. Okay, no. then I'm you're wrong. Thinking of the location of the first battle of the Clone Wars. Oh. It's not. The well, G-spot. then I totally <laughs> went with Camino, as an L Camino. <laughs> yeah, that is incorrect. For us, it's Camino. That's not the answer I have. What's the answer you have? Bias. B Y S S. Camino is the cloning facility. Obi Wan Kenobi went there to investigate, and that's where Sifo Dias had his name. Oh, that's right, because I remember because he was trying to look it up in the archives, and the 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 librarian was like, "Bitch, I don't know anything about that planet." And then I was like, "Did he check it with a K instead of a C?" I'm so glad you watched that movie yesterday. This is not not in the movie. This is in the extended universe. This is not an army that he built to go fight people. This is an army that he has so he can jump from body to body. Oh, 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 okay. We all miss. We all miss. Oh. No, no. I understood him. I just didn't know the answer. No, so I didn't I know he meant Camino. like Palpatine clones. So you're, yeah, you're talking about um, like the Dark Empire. Let me read the about. question again. Palpatine the Dark Empire was Luke. An army of clone bodies. Yeah. For himself. I, I thought you meant the clone army. No. On what planet? You're right. I, I'm wrong. See, I'm that's one of those errors in test taking. Right got to read the whole question. Yeah. So you gotta <laughs> listen. I'm play part of Alex Trebek right now. Oh, I'm so sorry. I thought you would have got that. I'm sorry. So close. <laughs> I didn't I love pretentious comments. Trebek. I didn't either. I, I just looked on the internet. You still beat us all. Yeah. You, yeah. Still beat, you probably yeah. got the most points. Yeah, you did. You won. Okay. I I'm, had you say the answers last because I figured you would have gotten all of them. Can I just – can I please fix my wardrobe? <laughs> Yeah, as it. long as it I involves you not it. taking off your pants. I have yes. underwear on. No. no, you can't take off your pants. We need to get into the script. Okay. We need my pants to get into the script? <laughs> no, don't put your pants into the script. Okay. You're first. He usually does go first. <laughs> this is the politics of Star Wars. If we're going Star to discuss Wars, yeah. Star Wars politics, it seems prudent to begin with the planet Coruscant. By now, we've all most likely heard of Coruscant, the glittering citywide planet hailed the political capital of the Star Wars universe. The prequel trilogy brought this massive city to life, borrowing the name from the Star Wars Expanded Universe. The Expanded Universe is a collective term for all Star Wars fictional material officially licensed by Lucasfilm. This Expanded Universe includes books, comic books, video games, including Knights of the Old Republic, and television. (laughs) It is intended as an enhancement 
to an extension of the Star Wars theatrical films produced by George Lucas. What, what about it? the ones that he directed? Yeah. Oh. That George Lucas directed? Yeah. What about Indiana Jones? What do you mean? Is that part of Star Wars? I heard no. those are the dreams that Han Solo has when he's in Carbonite. <laughs> why did you point out that video game? What do you mean, why? Yeah, why did you hit that specific? Because Knights of the Old Republic has a big uh, fandom on the internet. So there's no controversy around it? You just wanted to point it out? There's a lot of controversy around Knights of the <gasps> Old Republic. We want a third game that's actually a third game. Come on, Bioware. Okay, so, so there's no real controversy? What do you mean? Just the people want another game. Yeah, and else. Bioware didn't give us a third game. They abandoned the Revan story and gave us an MMORPG, which was, okay, fine. Like A lot of people like it, but it's not the conclusion to the Revan story that we wanted. Yeah. You know, it's it's a betrayal of everything that we love. I am, I feel betrayed right now. Is that that look of regret in your eye again? <laughs> <laughs> All right, Nicole, you're up. Jump in any time. Yeah, though Stop it was... this conversation. I, I'm just trying not to talk over you. Though it was namely The <laughs> Phantom Menace that gave Coruscant cinematic life, its first silver screen appearance was actually in the special edition release of Return of the Jedi, during the scene showing the galaxy-wide celebration of the Emperor's demise. It is also important to note that while it was in the... Hmm, it is also important to note that while it was the expanded universe, now renamed the Legends of Universe, specifically the Thrawn trilogy by author Timothy Zahn that introduced the name Coruscant. I never realized that Coruscant showed up in Return of the Jedi. In the yeah, it's edition. at the very the end. Did, but yeah, the a scene of it did. It was added yeah, in special no, edition. No, it's yeah. one of those things. Like, cause, yeah. I don't know. Maybe it's because I grew up with the non-special edition. Yeah, that when I they're don't. all partying yeah, at exactly. the end they had and a there's statue. fireworks. They were toppling a statue. Yes. Yeah. Yes. Now, as you say it, I'm remembering the yeah. scene. So. Yeah, I didn't remember it either. But Oh, yeah. Okay. Mm-hmm. The idea of Coruscant was always in the background of the Star Wars writing process. But it was Zahn who gave the perfect name to a planet dominated by the intermittently flickering lights of a colossal cityscape. Coruscant and the vision of the city planet was kept intact by publisher Del Rey throughout the entire Expanded Universe series until the New Jedi Order era of the early 2000s when the planet was conquered and terraformed by the monstrous... Oh, Faraz, please, if I get this wrong. <laughs> <laughs> the Yuzan Vong. Oh, good. That's what I thought. Yuzan Vong. The Yuzan Vong are an alien race that kind of look like zombies wearing dark elf armor, kind of like what Faraz is wearing right now. I'm wearing Sith robes. <laughs> <laughs> Wasn't Yuzan Vong that basketball player from China? Yeah, he was big on the Rockets. He was awesome. Yes, Seven he was footer. Really good. I loved him. Really good. As Coruscant was dying in the books, it was thriving on the big screen, where it served as a central location in the prequel trilogy. Coruscant, by mere virtue of its name, bridged a huge divide in the Star Wars fan base. Among those who dismissed the expanded universe as insignificant and those who held the opinion that those novels, comics, and video games like Knights of the Old Republic contain stories worth telling. For the purpose of this introduction into Star Wars politics, we will venture into the era beloved by most fans, the Reagan years. <laughs> also Star known Wars. as... Oh, I mean the Imperial era. The shift from Republic to Empire isn't unique to just Star Wars. Octavius managed to restructure the romanticized Roman Republic into the century-spanning Roman Empire not too long after being named heir to his uncle Julius Caesar. Now, I'm bringing this up because it's an important, uh, I guess, parallel to what Palpatine ends up doing. So I feel like George Lucas and his writers borrowed from Roman history to create the fall of Republic to Empire. So Vader is Palpatine's nephew? Wait, what? What? Well, you're saying, hold on, that Vader would be Augustus in this? I, yeah, no. I, no, no. I, my comparison it has Palpatine as Augustus. Who holds uh, up the skull, which the I get, skull and says, et tu, Boutte? Well, that would be Julius Caesar, okay. who is Augustus' Skywalker. Et tu, Skywalker. Which is Augustus' um, <clears throat> uncle. Well, yeah, uncle. But then he named him as heir. See, this mm. is why nobody knows how Shumi got pregnant with things. See? <laughs> this is why. This so is why. confused. You gotta oh, make it through the last movie. Yeah, I, 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 see, I see that much, but I'm... <laughs> the conversion from Roman Republic to Empire was one bathed in blood, and yet still discreet. Unlike Palpatine, Octavius never proclaimed himself emperor, though much like Palpatine, he maintained the illusion of the Senate of the Senate's legitimacy. Both men maintained the illusion of a working democracy. Octavius, who would later be known as Augustus Caesar was never open about the true restructuring of his government. He kept the appearance of a democratic consul, though history understands that he was not only the first emperor of Rome, but perhaps the greatest. And here I'm uh, 
referencing the Pax Romana. What is that? Which is basically the peace of Rome. It was a highlight of Roman history where there was suddenly this huge period of peace and uh, prosperity for the people. When did they build the road? Mm -hmm. Like in the Republic age, throughout the empire. And then there was that phrase, all roads lead to Rome. Yeah, I remember that from Spaceship Earth. (sighs) (laughs) This disguise of being more democratic than tyrant is nicely reflected and epitomized in the prequels by Chancellor Palpatine's hissing statement in Revenge of the Sith. I am the Senate. (gasps) Spoiler alert. Um, I was just thinking, Spaceship Earth, since Disney likes to go all Star Wars anyway, we could restructure Spaceship Earth and do this story. Yeah. And they wouldn't Does have it to all end with communication scene. and all that kind of stuff, too? <laughs> what? Pretty much towards the end. It's all about communication, too, in, st- in Spaceship Earth. Yeah. Are we going to still have to thank the Phoenicians? Uh, are the Phoenicians in this script? No. <laughs> then no. <laughs> <laughs> then I don't want to do it. <laughs> Why? You know, like all the Phoenicians? Uh, you know they have hats now that's saying if you... That say if you can read this and on the back it says thank the Phoenicians. They sell hats that say that. That's pretty funny. <laughs> Who put the alphabet in alphabetical order? Alpha. What? <laughs> I don't know. The Phoenician. Oh, okay. <laughs> Palpatine, unlike Octavius, openly informs the entire Galactic Senate that the Republic will be reorganized in, into an empire in the interest of security. There is no false pretense of a Republic here. Despite this open proclamation, we know that by the time of Alderaan's unfortunate demise, Palpatine has kept the Senate intact. It was just kind of a trick question because I was talking about the Phoenicians, so right, you made it seem like it might have been somebody else. No, it was a it was a joke, and a "They Might Be Giants" song. I don't know anything of theirs. Yeah, you do. I know their as Constantinople. Oh, I've heard that one, okay. and I know the their version of the Main Street Electrical Parade. They have a version of that? Yeah. I want to hear that. Okay, well, I will. stop the podcast. No, we'll just both play it for you later. Palpatine, as we know, came from a background in politics on Naboo. He wasn't a military man, though he was secretly a Sith Lord. His career in politics led him to the Galactic Senate on Coruscant, where he served as the ambassador for Naboo. From there, we know that he conspired against his homeworld, creating a notorious trade blockade that would eventually serve as the fulcrum for a little slave boy from the desert finding his way to the Jedi, and later, the Sith. Oh, you also, they did the Mickey Mouse Clubhouse. It's the Mickey Mouse Clubhouse. Hot dog, hot dog. <laughs> oh, that one too. on like the really exciting material here? <laughs> it's just killing me inside. Mickey it's Mouse like Clubhouse needles, is exciting. Like, um, every ounce of my <laughs> flesh. <laughs> How do you not like They Might Be Giants? Come on. <laughs> We are focused. We are super focused. Well, we also know that Palpatine, Uh, uh, after uh, his rise to Supreme Chancellor of the Republic, controlled the clones that made up the Grand Army of the Republic. The clones were genetically bred to be loyal to Palpatine, giving him a similar leverage of loyalty that Octavius enjoyed from the legions of Rome. So basically, whereas Octavius earned the loyalty of his military, Palpatine artificially installed it into his. Using the greatest bounty hunter ever. Django, Django Fett? Django. <laughs> yeah. See, I figured that out yesterday when watching it because he had like a little clone of himself. Of and Boba? I was like, that's Boba Fett. Yeah, they're all clones. And I said, I was like, don't you find it weird? Every time that Django Fett is talking to Boba Fett, I'm like, he's basically talking to his younger self. Like, that's not weird. She found, a- some, she found the whole thing perverse. But it's essentially carrying on his legacy in the most perfect way. But it's not, it's weird. It's like he's talking to his younger self. Like, that's if you had your childhood self right next to you. And it's not Lex, it's like you. It's like, that's weird. Then this podcast would have an even even greater JL here. (laughs) (laughs) Double the JL. Double the JL. (laughs) With regards to Django Fett, though. On the ba- after the Battle of Geonosis, when Boba holds up Django's helmet, is Django's head still in the helmet? I have always wondered that. Like, yeah, is, is he lifting up his father's head? We don't know. I don't know. That's like a really somber scene. It is. It is. Especially if the head's still in there. Yeah, <laughs> it's even worse. That's Game of Thrones style. <laughs> <laughs> it's no secret that George Lucas and Star Wars at large often try to reflect the political climate of the United States. Given that, one might add that there are studies suggesting that the U.S. has gone the way of Rome and the Galactic Republic. That is to say that the Republic and the government is actually controlled a hand-select few. While Octavius never proclaimed himself Emperor of Rome, his successors were never shy about doing so. By then, they had all the cards they needed to 
exposed the title openly and no longer needed, no longer had need for the tact exercised by their celebrated predecessor. <laughs> Thanks, Raz. <laughs> <laughs> the ideal of Republic and the people who held it dear no longer had any means to curb the power of their government's executive. I need to expand my vocabulary. <laughs> Hey, Nicole. Yes. Did you know They Might Be Giants had three kids' albums? No. They're really good. Well, that would explain why they did a cover of the Electrical Parade. They had one that went over the letters, one that went over the numbers, and one that went over science. We're going to need copies of those. What's the Electrical Parade? What? 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 I'm not a a Disney person. Well, it's not there anymore, but with all the floats that were covered in all the twinkly lights. Oh, my goodness. Well, I'll show you later. It's there for like 162. It's still going. You, you just have it. to pay attention. And back to politics. The exact same <laughs> plays out in Star Wars <laughs> politics, though in a single lifetime, fortunate for Palpatine. Though it's obvious to anyone who's seen the original and the prequel trilogies that Palpatine has no interest in sharing power. He keeps the Galactic Senate, now the Imperial Senate, around only until he has power to secure a total claim to governmental authority over all people. But what is the power that boosts his political reach? Ooh, ooh, ooh! The Death Star. (gasps) I knew that yesterday, too, when it came up in the movie. All right. Good thing that wasn't in the pop quiz. No, it would (laughs) have been good if it was in the pop quiz. I would have known it. I saw They Might Be Giants four times. <laughs> Why are we going back to this? Because they're good things. At, <laughs> at the start of the original trilogy, stop giving me dagger eyes for <laughs> At the start of the original trilogy, we know that Palpatine's empire has already been engaged in guerrilla warfare with a rebellion founded by disillusioned senators of the Old Republic. While the Rebel Alliance was probably little more than a thorn in the side of the empire, it did boast superb engines of war, such as the iconic Y-Wing. Are you freaking kidding me right now? <laughs> Honestly, it says iconic X-Wing. I, know, but I like the Y-Wing better. I thought the what? A-Wing was much better. You like know, it A-wing. had the speed. I mean, not as much firepower, but it was right there, like, quick attacks. You what? know what's interesting about this? Because, like, Nintendo Star Fox was based loosely on Star Wars. Was it? So really? The R- yeah, so the R-Wing is basically Nintendo's version of the X-Wing. And in Star Fox's world, their story, the they combined the Y-Wing the X-Wing, and the A-Wing to create a fighter that had the speed of an A-Wing, but the bombing capabilities of a Y-Wing, but also the structure of an X-Wing. So, and if you look at, like, different YouTube channels and, like, um, versus uh, stats, the R-Wing would actually come up on top of the X-Wing in, like, a dogfight. You know, another interesting fact, when I was a little boy and I played Star Wars, I always picked the Y-Wing. I don't believe you. Like in the old Rogue Squadron games, the Y-Wing was no, a sluggish the little thing. The, 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 the toys. The, the toys. I think yeah. the Y-Wing is very underappreciated. No, it, it is because they need it. But if they had souped up the X-Wing to also be a bomber, like um, what is the freak, what is Corneria's like alliance name in Star Fox? Because like they, instead of creating three separate classes of fighter, they rolled it all into one Fox. super fighter, which is the R-Wing. You know, it was a dumb ship, that bomb thing in Last Jedi. Yeah, they should have just brought back the B-Wing. Yeah. Hold cool. on. The bomb thing in The Last Jedi, and we shouldn't get me started on how stupid The Last <laughs> Jedi is. But let's go ahead and like, let's go ahead and also mention the fact that how does gravity work in space, Disney? Do you drop bombs in space? Where would that go? It wouldn't go down. It. it wouldn't go down. Because there's no fucking gravity. They would thanks. Now I gotta put explicit language on this episode. <laughs> it's like the curse. bombs wouldn't just they would they would scatter. You don't. They had little. You, they had little jets on the top. You didn't see them. They had little jets. So the bombs had little they were jets dropping them. them. They were dropping them. Not yeah, little jets. Like they weren't like proton war. torpedoes. I think it's your turn. Me? Yeah. I just yeah, played clearly just the rebellion. No, you got the vein popping out of your forehead. <sighs> Now rebel and read this script. Clearly, the rebellion had attracted the sympathy of those with means and capital. If Palpatine had bluntly disbanded the entire Senate prematurely, he no doubt would have seen more sympathizers flock towards the rebellion's banners, expanding its fleet and its capabilities. So, like any clever despot, he bid his time. Come the advent of the Death Star, there was no longer any need for the cover of democracy. The rebellion surely could do nothing against the Death Star, and its investors would certainly be scared into submission when the Emperor revealed that he could destroy entire planets. Hey, Nicole. Yes, sir. You know, There Might Be Giants has like 22 hours. I hate you. <laughs> I, what are you doing? <laughs> this is a rich subject full of very intriguing material. And you're, I'm very you're putting it on a back burner. I've learned a lot, actually. 
I like what? What have you learned? Uh, the most popular <laughs> They Might Be Giants album is called Flood. <laughs> what have you learned about Star Wars so Do far? Do you have anything stronger than High Light right now? I didn't like <laughs> We should have brought the handle of vodka. I can't. Oh, it's almost done. We, we made cucumber martinis last night. That's fine. And it you got to bring more next week because I think you owe me like two. I'm. I need to bring something. This we'll is... we'll get drinks after yeah, this. I, I want to know the next paragraph. Oh, oh do you want to know it? <laughs> oh, <laughs> okay, right. You better be because... quiet. Chris wants to know what happens next <laughs> because just like they might be giants, this paragraph. Might it is be really hot in here. I am sweating. <laughs> you're, in, you're in full Sith robe. <laughs> you're wearing a Sith robe. <laughs> I'm also <laughs> like. You look like a Naboo Kylo Red. <laughs> <laughs> I, I hate Kylo Ren, and I feel like you know that. <laughs> oh my God. You know when we went to the Star Wars exhibit, <laughs> there was Kylo, no Kylo, Kylo, Kylo Ren the exhibit. There was, like no, Kylo Ren. there was nothing about Kylo Ren there because he sucks. He's Kylo a ripoff Ren of Jason awesome. Solo. Did you just say he's awesome? He's awesome. Oh my gosh. Okay. He's awesome. Okay, you cannot charge over this table. This is expensive equipment. Um, there were Ray costumes. There were what's the other guy's name? Don't look at me. Finn I'm fuming. Yeah, him, him. There were Finn costumes, but there was no Kylo Ren. Can we focus on the fact that Chris walked away from this whole thing? <laughs> he like he abandoned the show. He did not abandon the show. Well, then the I show. guess I'll read the next He's part that he'll never it's ever okay. hear. Kylo. We all know that events would not play out the way Palpatine had hoped. Another consequential boy from the desert found his way into the mix of galactic drama and loosened the Emperor's intended iron grip on civilization. And, as one might expect, the disbandment of the Senate and the destruction of the Death Star, the Rebellion attracted its sympathizers. So much that Palpatine had to invest what one could only imagine to be a huge sums of money into the construction of a second Death Star. Unless, of course, the second Death Star was already under construction before the destruction of the first, but that's another subject. And an invigorating one. Is it... When you're done listening to this, here is something else you can sink your ear holes into. Fay Ray. <coughs> Janet Lee. <coughs> Adrian King. <coughs> Heather Langenkamp. <coughs> Amy Steele. <coughs> that weatherman who saw the cockroach. The- oh my god! Jamie Lee Curtis. <laughs> and you. Come on. You know you wanna. Let her rip. <laughs> oh my god! There. Now don't you feel better? You are now officially a Scream Queen. Come play with the rest of us at www.screamqueens.com. That's Queens with a Z. Or you could subscribe to us on iTunes. Either way, it's going to be fucking fabulous. The Scream Queens Horror Podcast. It's where horror gets bent. Hey, this is Sean Kendall with In Poor Taste. And I'm Eric. And I'm Lonnie. And you're listening to Podcast 42. How is it not? We don't know. Was he planning for two Death Stars or was the one sufficient? I think he might have already been working on it because the fact of the matter is there was that fake, unfinished, but still operational, operational kind of aspect to it that would totally make it believable yeah, was he that they were a working fleet at of this. Death Stars. That would be Why cool. wouldn't you? What if the Starkiller base was really a Death Star final plan? That they had already in there. Oh, that's a good theory. I like that one. And for the record, I was trying to get you a fan. I saw that. I think it was, <laughs> I you think know, it was I saw loud. you get the fan going, and my heart felt some warmth for you, yeah. but which made me hotter. I just think it would be too loud. It would be it would right into the microphones. <laughs> yeah. Hey, Nicole. I broke JL. Nicole. Yes. You did. Um, they Might Be Giants has a service called <laughs> Dial a Song, and they actually do a original I'm taking song. my pants off. This is ridiculous. <laughs> yeah, it. take this them is, off. This is absurd. <laughs> Hold on. They do an original song every day. Really? You could, you could call them on the phone. Here you know, I'm just going like to take it. off the Sith robes. Yeah. From the era of Republic to the era of Empire, Palpatine secures his footing as quite possibly the most politically cunning person in all of Jeez, Star Wars. How do they wear these things? <laughs> <laughs> 
especially on the desert Darth islands. Darth Maul wore that well, on Tatooine, fighting, oh, fighting Qui Gon Jinn. Oh my god! Yeah, I like drop like ten, like <laughs> ten degrees right now. <laughs> Imagine what the Jedi's could do with their power if they weren't wearing those heavy ass robes. Yeah, exactly. They're probably using the power just to keep themselves cool, like a little force <laughs> field coolness. Force cool. Force cool. Force AC. Though Palpatine begins his journey as a senator from a small, essentially defenseless world, Name we see him manipulate one event after another, each serving as a step in his ladder towards unlimited power. That it, was really good. It's an Can all you caps. do a maniacal laugh with that, too? Maniacal laugh. No, you're not supposed to say maniacal yes, laugh. Yes, you are. That's what they do in, the Muppets. It in the Muppets. It's oh, one of the best things ever. Don't Chris tell Cooper. me how to say it. Even I know that, but okay. I'm still offended because Palpatine never laughed when he said it. He was very serious. Yeah, I know, but her was very serious power power sounded power. very maniacal. I'm offended that they might be giants and never won a Grammy. <laughs> We should do it like Palpatine. I'm offended that we Jethro sh- Tull won the first Grammy for Best Metal Album. I'm bringing a vote to the table right now. We do an episode on They Might Be Giants. I would love that. Okay. And we know can I sit <laughs> out of that one? No, no, you can never sit. I'm here for this. You have to come We're to everyone. This. this is exciting. <laughs> Chris just said he learned so much. J.O. just said he has to expand his vocabulary. Everyone is learning. Chris, what have you learned so far? I have learned that... <laughs> About Star Wars. Oh. <laughs> I've learned that Faraz is our Geordie LaForge, and he is my reading rainbow. I've learned that the R-Wing was based on Star Fox. No, 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 no. No, the, no, the R-Wing is based on the X-Wing. And then it was a combination of the Y wing, R wing, and A wing all rolled into one super fighter. Oh, wait, 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 wait! The Y wing, A wing, R wing, and X wing were all mixed into one. What are they? The Q ring? No, they're the element and O ring. Oh, oh LMFAO we, ring! We've been having the LMFAO a- ring because they're sexy and they know it. Are you all trying to fist bump each other right no. now? What is yeah, happening? We are. <laughs> element and O is a they might be giant song. Yeah. <laughs> We've been having issues with those letters. Oh, but you know what? But the power of Palpatine's empire was actually not entirely unlimited. The reach of the empire was certainly far and wide, but apart from pockets of resistance, there were also simple blind spots, particularly along the outer rim territories. You sound less bored. (laughs) (laughs) I think I sound great. I sound like a narrator. (laughs) This, we're starting to get interesting. That dessert that we keep mentioning, I mean, that desert that we keep mentioning. <laughs> <laughs> the it's one from say that. It, is, it has one. It is the same dessert. <laughs> it's, it's baked Alaska. He did it on purpose. <laughs> the one that, that <laughs> I can't. The one from which the two children of Star Wars, Destiny, hail, Tatooine. One of my least favorite planets. Not Tatoon. I agree. Why? It is why honestly ta- one of my least favorite why would you planets. Think it's tattooed? <laughs> how the hell would you think that? You know what? Hold on. I got to do a bad C3PO and like Luke Skywalker thing here going. <laughs> All right? I got to quote. Okay. If there's a bright sun. Center... You didn't say quote first. No, I said I have to quote. <laughs> All right? Quote unquote. Quote unquote. <laughs> if there's a bright center to the universe, you're on the planet that it's farthest from. Luke Skywalker tells C-3PO of his sandy homeworld. We know from the prequels that Tatooine does not participate in the Galactic Republic, as the junk dealer Watto informs Qui-Gon Jinn that Republic currency is worthless here. Tatooine is governed by the rule of the Huts and their gangster-like laws in the Republic era. I learned something in that paragraph. Wait a second. Hold on. What? I really do need to... Press pause. Yeah, do I have to turn my page? Qui Gon Jinn was dead before Luke Skywalker was ever introduced. So what? Can you yeah. just read the paragraph silently in your okay. head to give it to yeah, make? Yeah. There's nothing wrong with that paragraph. Right. There's nothing wrong. You're just forgetting part of the okay. movies. Okay. Yeah. Uh, no, no, no. I'm I'm seeing it now because it's around the time like when they go and meet Watto and he's like. Your mind tricks don't work on yes, me. Yes, I remember that. The... And then he's like, "Your currency no good here," and just. Every other yes. awful stereotype that he was yes. in that movie. What yeah. was his stereotype? I don't know, but it was better than Jar Jar's. Yeah. Okay. All right. Sorry. What was Jar Jar supposed to be? Uh, I a don't pain know, in the some... ass. 
racist thing than it probably Annoying. should have been. But this should have been in the fishbowl facts. But um, playing behind Watto was uh, "Birdhouse in Your Soul" by They Might Be Giants. And that's- <laughs> I actually heard that. <laughs> Is this a real fact? Yeah, it's a real fact. It is. You're both looking at me very seriously. I don't know whether to flip out or not. No, go back no and watch you shouldn't. That scene it's again. really in there. It's in there. I'm a little friend. I'm your only friend. I'm not your only friend. I feel like you're I want to. In this moment, I take care I of you. I get you your junk. <laughs> your ge- your Jedi mind tricks don't work on me. I had junkie in. In episode four, A New Hope, we see Imperial Stormtroopers not only slaughtering residents at Tatooine, but also going so far as to set up checkpoints in one of the planet's bustling spaceport cities and centers of commerce, most Eisley. That the Empire was able to deploy troops into hut controlled territory is a complicated issue in itself. Moss, I, I never thought of that, actually, so th- that was good. Kudos What do you that. never think about? I didn't, I didn't think about the Empire and hut territory. That never crossed my mind. I learned something. I'm giving you a compliment. That is really Thank good. You. I have to admit, yeah, now <laughs> yeah, knowing this. Know well, J- JL actually gave me the idea to pursue Tatooine and how it was relevant to the Empire. Okay. Thank Mos you. Eisley sort of became the capital of Tatooine only because the Huts transitioned their wealth and businesses from Mos Espa, which had served as the planet's center of trade throughout the Republic era. In fact, the Huts only moved their businesses from Mos Espa to Mos Eisley out of fear that newly formed Empire might investigate their smuggling practices and underhanded operations. Now, was Mos Espa on Tatooine? I don't know. Yeah. The, yeah. <laughs> what <laughs> No, no, no. no. It's I'm the, just this I'm trying to movies. understand, like, because it's like Mos Eisley and Mos Espa. Is it just like two different spots on yeah. Tatooine? So, in say the Phantom Menace, that with the pod races were, yeah, that's Mos Espa. Oh, that right. was the old capital of Tatooine. By the time you get to A New Hope, they go to they meet Han Solo in Mos Eisley, which is now the relocated capital. Oh. They move, the Huts move their capital from Mos Espa to Mos Eisley from the in the transition of Republic to Empire. Makes sense. I think it'd be cool if they had a Moss Moss. Moss Moss. I see your name Moss. No? Okay. I think it would also be cool if they made a Bounty Hunter movie and a Hut movie. They should do that. There was a Bounty Hunter game for GameCube. It was actually pretty good. Was it? Oh, it yeah. It was about Jango Fat. Yeah, I had that I had that for PS2. It was really good. It was good. I want a movie. It's good. Ironic, then, that the Empire would eventually send troops to the new capital not to investigate the dealings of the Huts, but merely to find two droids. Who they were not looking for. <laughs> <laughs> oh, this is me now. Yeah. <laughs> Even though Imperial troops murdered and interfered with residents of Tatooine, all without consequence from the Huts, that's not to say that the Empire controlled the desert planet. The Huts essentially controlled the com- controlled the Huts essentially controlled commerce in the outer rim, with their smuggling operations even reaching Imperial space, which we know by Han Solo explaining why he has hiding nooks within the Millennium Falcon. So it would seem that the Huts and the Empire have an uneasy truce of sorts. The Huts don't interfere with Imperial military operations. And the Empire doesn't conquer Tatooine for the mere sake of increasing its tax revenues. After all, even though the Huts control much of the organized crime within the Outer Rim, that's not to say that Tatooine itself is worth the expense of conquest. You know, the Outer Rim always sounds dirty to me. (laughs) Right, because the Inner Rim is a lot cleaner. (laughs) Moving on. (laughs) Shortly after Palpatine's new order and the restructuring of the Republic into the Empire... The desert planet suffered a miserable drought that further worsened the already horrid living conditions of the planet. It simply wouldn't have made monetary sense for the Empire to absorb Tatooine as it did the Republic worlds. So, the Empire turned a deliberate blind eye towards Tatooine. Well, for the most part. At least until Princess Leia escaped the Battle of Scarif. Scarif? Yes. And headed to Tatooine with two droids. I'm going to guess C-3PO and R2-D2. Yes. No, it's actually yes. BB-8. <laughs> it must and not BP-8. Black droid from um, <laughs> BB-90. I know. Oh, we were That's wondering what the name was a couple of weeks ago, right? Mm-hmm. Yeah, BB-90. We were at the Apple Store, which it's really... It was my first time ever in that <laughs> godforsaken place. Yeah, what's that like? I had to go because of Nicole. She has to buy an overpriced uh, computer charger. Oh, okay. You know, for Apple product, and you know. Anyway, I don't want to get into that right now. I'll write a whole episode about oh, how much way, I hate Apple. Um, that charge is now obsolete. They just replaced it. You they probably did, one. but they're being brave by doing so. They're courageous. <laughs> yeah, and they were asking us what the uh, name of the. No, they black... weren't asking. They had a they little were... BB-8 figurine that was moving around, and they had the little black one too. And the, somebody was asking the guy, "What's that one called?" And the Apple person was like, "I don't know what it's called." So I asked Froz, and he's like, "I don't know. I didn't know he had a name." Yeah, I had no idea. He had yeah, no idea. So Froz was slacking. 
Every on character that one. has a name. Minor I didn't. No, I didn't say. I didn't know he had a name. I didn't know his name. Okay. The Planet Bells Best Spin. Sorry, let me start over. The Planet Best Spin was another blind spot, as Lando Calrissian. Yes. Mentioned in The Empire Strikes Back, the gas planet and mining operations around it had dodged all had all dodged Imperial attention. That is, until the bounty hunter Boba Fett anticipated the trajectory of Han Solo's escape from Hoth and informed Darth Vader of the planet and its mining cities. The Empire didn't hesitate too long before conquering and garrisoning Bespin and those cities. Yeah, garrisoning. Like you're garrisoning. garrisoning a city. Garrisoning. I, I don't know. I'm a little I, upset. I, that I don't know what I didn't that get means. To Lando over. Calrissian. What? I wish I could have talked about Lando Calrissian. Don't yeah. worry, the new movie is coming out, and you'll be able to talk about it a whole lot. Speaking notes. Here. I know, and I can't wait. I'm sure I will be the one talking about Lando Calrissian. My goal is movie. to catch up on the movies before solo comes out not to change the topic but i really think in solo donald glover's performance is going to be the performance of the entire movie as lando you know what else uh the two lead singers of they might be giants are both named john <laughs> i heard they're actually playing stormtroopers in the movie are they That'd be- are yeah i heard they have a cameo you, you had your paper up above your face so i couldn't look at you like like you knew that i was just gonna stare hatefully no, at I, you i am not afraid of your stares <laughs> You know, on that note, one cannot discuss politics perfect without segue. simultaneously <laughs> discussing finances, specifically the riveting subject of taxation. I am riveted. Keep going, JL. Tell Taxes. Me. I like to keep my audience riveted. <laughs> we know that the Empire didn't think Tatooine was worth absorbing because it was just sand in the huts. <laughs> So, we also know that the Rebel Alliance was largely financed by sympathizers, including those with means such as former Republic Senators Mon Mothma, who united independent rebel cells under the banner of the Alliance. Where was she from? Do we know? Her home planet? Yes. I didn't look into it. Okay. And Bail Organa of Alderaan Royalty. The Alliance also executed raids on Imperial facilities in order to confiscate materials and bolster its own resources. They actually got the X-Wing... From one such raid. Ooh, nice. The Empire's military spanned the known galaxy, accentuated by massive Star Destroyers and even flagship Super Star Destroyers, such as the Executor-class Dreadnoughts, including Darth Vader's own Executor, and the Gargantuan Ravager, the ruins of which were seen on Jakku and The Force Awakens. So you say Executor, but all I think is Executor, which is a Pokemon, which we'll be talking about next week. Just you are a week ahead. <laughs> you are a week ahead. You're Just... excited for next week. I'm so excited. That's Vader, Vader, Vader. It's obvious that the Empire <laughs> afforded these weapons of war by heavily taxing planets that formerly belonged to the Galactic Republic. And by outright ups- up. Oppression. oppression. Of, oppre- I was going to say oppression. Give him a second. Of newly conquered territory. In fact, Palpatine's rise from senator to emperor and the fall of transformation of republic to empire can largely be attributed to the crafty manipulation of tax law. Just like that gangster in Chicago. Yeah, what was his name? I forget. Goose. The one goose? That they the goose. No, the one no they Capone. <laughs> Capone, yeah. Al Capone. Oh, yeah, Al Capone. Yeah, you know there's a tour about all that stuff in Chicago. Really? And the entire tour is like, now, this building's gone, but imagine it being here when all this happened. <laughs> and it's yeah. really like that. Oh, you want to know it's funny? So when I was in Venice, I went on a walking tour, and they were telling us a bunch of facts about the city, and they walked us over to a building, and they said... This is where um, one of the explorers, uh, gosh, and like the name is escaping me right now. But Ponce they said, Leon? no, uh, this is uh, where Magellan. One of, no, come on. You got to love Magellan. Uh, yeah, I, All I, around I, the world. Christopher no. Columbus. Mm, no, no, no. They no. just gave him shifts to get rid of him. <laughs> I can't, I can't remember who it was, but they said, this is where his house was. This is not his original house, though. His house burned down, and this building was built in, his, in this place. But he, this was not his original house. But if you take any of the gondola tours, the people who drive the gondolas, they are going to tell you that this is his house. And that's not true. And sure enough, we wound up taking a gondola ride. And they were like, and this is where he used to live. And we were like, ha, 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 ha. But he didn't. It used to be there. Did but you call is- them out? And then you went, No, Ooh. but... We uh, went on the gondola tour with people that we did the walking tour with. So we were all waiting to see if that guy was going to say that incorrect fact. And he 
did. And we all kind of looked at each other. And we're like, oh, my gosh. Did the... you breathe at all during that story? Yes. You talked very fast. <laughs> it was exciting. It's memory. I know. I found out it was the guy's house, but it wasn't. But it, they say it is. It was yes. a... Hmm. <laughs> well, they learned that they're going to lie to her. They lied to her. Backtracking to the period just before the Phantom Menace, the Trade Federation had complained to the Galactic Republic that specific free trade route divided the activity of pirates, <laughs> disrupted their business operations. What? Of uh, pirates. pirates. Yeah, I wasn't expecting the word pirates there. <laughs> <laughs> they threw me for a loop. With the intention of possibly forcing the affected systems to handle the piracy problem themselves, the Galactic Republic addressed the Trade Federation's concern by imposing mandatory listings of They Might Be Giant <coughs> albums on these free trade zones. They imposed tariffs on those free trade zones. Oh, I read that wrong. I apologize. <sighs> the implementation of tariffs on trade was obviously not the kind of response the Trade Federation... Wa- what are you all signaling right now? Nothing! Nothing! <laughs> I'm not a part of this, so don't don't let me. He in this agrees, group. and once you see what he agrees to, you'll appreciate it. Just keep reading. You're the doing great. The implementation of tariffs on trade was obviously not the kind of response the Trade Federation wanted. Or as China. now, not only were they being harassed by pirates, yo ho ho, but by new taxes we as well. We want the redhead. <laughs> not anymore. No. In retaliation, <laughs> the Trade Federation set up the infamous blockade around Naboo. That became the trigger to the Skywalker saga. <gasps> As we all know. Saga? What? Is it a saga? Or a saga. Or a saga. How did I say it? You said saga. I, I thought it? you were talking about the old console, Sega. Oh, uh, you know, I you know I talk differently than all of I you. Because he's Canadian, Canadian, eh? He knows what it's a boot. <laughs> As we all know, the trade blockade was not entirely a Federation idea, eh? But merely when implemented by them. <laughs> Credit for that turning point in galactic history goes to no other than the conniving center from Naboo, Palpatine. What? Him again? Emperor, no way. Emperor Poutine. <laughs> Palpatine. <laughs> Him and his cheese curds. <laughs> It was through this manipulation and exploitation of republic tax and trade laws that Palpatine set into motion the events which would see, which would see him become emperor of the entire galaxy. The success of Palpatine Putin. is built not just on the mirror reflection of ancient Rome's first emperor, nor is it founded upon sheer strength with the force, but rather on his keen ability to manipulate tax and trade laws. Although Force Lightning is uber cool, knowledge of tax law was the Emperor's greatest power. Star Wars politics! Yay! Yay! Bravo, Froz. Well, that was heavily edited by Chris. And I actually have a surprise for you. I think that was a very entertaining episode so far. (laughs) I have a surprise for Froz. I never realized how much They Might Be Giants really impacted the Star Wars universe. I know, right? They so they might be Jedi. Is that, that their the, new name? They, they might, might they be might giants be Jedi. <laughs> are the Imperial Guard? Wait, what? They might be giants. Are the Imperial Guard of the Star Wars universe? John and John. John and John. But the ones surprise. who are always around the Emperor. That's John and John. My surprise for us. It's a good one. This was edited to be a little more vocal read, and there's a couple paragraphs that were cut out of it. But if anybody. Would like to read the original essay by Faraz. It's 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 written a little bit differently, and you can go to our Patreon page. Yes, and for one dollar, you can read <clears throat> the original script, which is worth very well. Yes, there's a Patreon you did write page? it very well. Yeah, we do have a Patreon page. We never tout it because if you listen to us on Spreaker, um, Spreaker pays us, and we don't have to like beg for money. Like, wait, is this why I keep getting emails from Speaker? If you're logged into our email, yeah. yes, that's why. Oh. Yes, I get them all the time. I try to delete them as quickly as I can. We so have an email. Uh, it's Podcast42 on Patreon. And you can For $1, you can read those. And our email is podcast42show at gmail.com. That's 4-2 numerically, not alphanumerically. So it's podcast42show at gmail.com. Oh, wow. The more I know. Can I be part of this group? Yeah. Well, if you want to be part of the group, you have to go to the official Podcast 42 show page on Facebook, and it will ask you to tell us how you found us when you go to join. But we add everybody. So you could say, you found us listening to the Star Wars podcast episode, or you could just say, I found you because I felt like it. Because I love They Might Be Giants. Wait, was Jail asking for a plug, or does he really not know? He's asking for a plug. I'm doing both. But (laughs) I do have to say, the beer we had was phenomenal. 
I did like well, the filter. Before we get to the beer, ah. we got fishbowl facts. Fishbowl. Fishbowl facts. Facts from a fishbowl. Fishbowl facts. You know, I must facts say. Facts from a fishbowl. <laughs> it sounds like a lot of fun, everybody, but it's just a regular bowl that you would put potato chips or popcorn in. Because it's Nicole's not boring. actually a fish bowl. It is, it a would fish never put it a is fish not a fish bowl. bowl. And it Chris has, is it Chris has is a lying. Fish in it, <laughs> Chris, these facts are wet. Chris is lying to you. I see the fish right now, and I don't want to go in there. For what kind of it's fish? It's a samurai is it? fighting fish. It's a koi. All right, well, this is oh. your first episode. We've got random we got facts <laughs> in a fishbowl. We're going to pick them out one by Thanks one and for read fish them. Bowl. Jail, you start. Can I just say fish gross me out, so I don't want, like touching them. They're slimy. Okay, well, then We're having fish, for, fish for dinner. Then can everybody start grabbing their facts because I have a really short one and it's going to go really fast. <laughs> that's oh. Yeah, that's what she said. <laughs> I have this very long paper, and the first fact we have is Palpatine's first name was Sheev. I have an even shorter one than that. Palpatine killed his entire family. Oh, are we supposed to grab a bunch? I grabbed a bunch. That's okay. Just... No, just one. It's yeah. okay. He was he was recorded in history as the most evil Sith Lord who ever lived. Palpatine. Do I go now or who goes? Yeah, you. It's a circle. What? It's did weird. you forget about how we did it last week? Because last time when we did the intros, you went that way. Does, does it matter? Just go. Just go. We're doing it clockwise this week. Are we still doing the, the whole fishbowl facts if jingle? Like to, it's up to you. All right. Palpatine's name is a reworked version of the name Palpatine from the movie Taxi Driver. What the? I didn't know that. How is that? How? Uh, Lucas and Scorsese were friends. But there's not even a P. How does? How do you it's get a reworked? You but, read the word yeah. reworked. But but do you know how? Like what was? Yeah, there's an article on it, but I just I picked one little fact. That's why it's just a fishbowl fact. Fishbowl fact. Fishbowl 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 you know what? I never knew this. But James Earl Jones put in less than a day's work. Yeah. Like Darth Vader is hardly on the screen in the first movie. I know, but still. I would have never guessed that. And he barely talks. Fishbowl facts. Fishbowl. Okay. I have a uh, I have a fact, and I'm just trying to see if it means anything. Okay. So Yoda was originally named Minch Yoda, which Minch, M-I-N-C-H, sounds kind of like the Yiddish word Mensch. M A M E N S C H. And in Yiddish, that means a person of integrity and honor. Are you so, looking this up right now? I am looking it? it up right now. You know, now. on that note, though, a lot of the Star Wars names do mean things in different languages. Like Anakin, Anis, if you separate the name, it means no kin, means no family. Black licorice. Hmm? <laughs> it means black licorice. No, it means Anis. no no family. Oh. Like Luke <laughs> obviously means warm. And then warm. you have. Han Solo, which is like the internal temperature of a tauntaun. I, you know. Anyway, Mensch Yoda would what? mean. I thought that was yogurt. Yeah, I'm just plain old yogurt. But Mensch means a person of integrity and honor, which is pretty appropriate for Yoda, I think, from everything Boy. I've seen so far. I thought it meant green and hairy. Richard Nixon served as inspiration for Palpatine. <laughs> <laughs> Stephen Colbert, as a child was in the very first audience to see Star Wars, A New Hope, back I, in, like, 1977. I remember seeing a clip of him talking about that. Yeah, he dubs himself the original Star Wars fan. He saw it two weeks before its official release. That's wow. nice. Awesome. I know. Did you know the Battle of Endor was originally supposed to take place on the Wookiee home planet? Kashyyyk? That would have been better. Ian McDermid. Based the Emperor's voice on a style of Japanese vocal projection. Fishbowl facts. <laughs> Palpatine studied with Darth Plagueis. Who is that? I have no idea. Who is that? I gonna... Froz. Who is that? Who is that? Just explain who it is. Isn't Plagueis technically sort of immortal in a way because he figured out how to cheat death? Yeah. But Palpatine killed him. What? He said that was the irony. Spoilers. But <laughs> what if he wasn't? Really what, dead. What, you think he's Snoke? No, not at all. Because there are theories saying, you know, back when The Force Awakens came out, that Yes, maybe... that would have made sense. Yes, but... but now Plagueis was just another Sith that got yeah. know, killed, by his appre- killed by his apprentice. Yeah, just like every other Sith Lord. Yep. My turn? No, it's my turn. Why are oh. you trying to skip me? I'm sorry. I have one last fact. I'm just sorry. Okay, go. Cool. What's your last fact? During the days of the Galactic Empire, Palpatine made owning a lightsaber illegal. What? Yeah. Just like they did in um, feudal Japan. Yeah. Because it was one village was allowed like one sword or one knife per village. That's 
I know. How are they supposed to do any cooking? <laughs> no, we're oh, back they're in. using the sword <laughs> to do all their. They cooking. could. They could use swords to do cooking. Like yes. you toss up the fish or the fruit in the air. I mean, haven't you ever heard of fruit ninja? Have you never used a sword? Have you never heard of fruit ninja? Yes, because every ninja is using their sword for fruit, especially in feudal Japan. They could. That's where the game comes from. I like the playing. game comes from feudal Japan. Yes, I know. I can't believe it took this long for it to catch on. Uh, <laughs> uh, like Fruit Ninja, at Dave and Buster's. Me too. It's where it's that big screen yeah. and it's like Dave and Buster's is a rip off. It is. It really is. It Except totally on a is, Wednesday when it's half price games. Wednesday. It's still a rip off. It still play is, but it doesn't games. matter. Anyway, Emperor Palpatine was first played by a monkey and then by Elaine Baker as a hologram. I don't remember seeing him as a monkey. Because we, you saw the special edition of Empire Strikes Back. Oh, uh, like how uh, Jabba the Hutt was CGI really bad, and it was really obvious that um, it was, yeah, it was and George not really was bad. Love. That was breakthrough at the time. It was not. It was courageous at the time. It looks terrible now. Day? I love that movie. <laughs> Great Bill Murray movie. What? What's it about? <laughs> a groundhog. It's about a. Uh, uh, and a guy software who... that crashes, and we just recreate what we said earlier. <laughs> really? Is it anything like the the Truman Show, or the same day no, over and over again? Like no, not that like the Truman but Show. It's, but it's Groundhog the same day, day over phenomenal. and over again. Last fishbowl fact: Palpatine trained <laughs> under the Night Sisters, then killed them all. Fishbowl facts. And Darth Maul was born into the Night Sisters. His you know mother that? was a Night Sister. Did you know that Faraz was born in the Knights of Rez? I did not know that. Yes, his brother is Kylo Ren. That's why they have so <laughs> much to go in for each other. The moodiness, the hair. <laughs> no. If you could all I see his face am right now, posing <laughs> myself. So I don't jump over the table. That's right. Like and explain to Kylo you Ren taking out my disdain screen. for Kylo Ren. Did you know? It is not my fault that you have the same temper as Kylo Ren. Did you know? <laughs> this is important. It has to do with Star Wars politics. It's important. Did I, you know that uh, they might no, be no, giants no, 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 no. free shows? <laughs> Wait a minute. Hold on. Hold on. Slow down. That's true. That one just caught me off guard. Can you please repeat? They and it is shot. Are we going for drinks after this? Occasionally, they will just show up in a city and start playing for free. That's awesome. That is awesome. I wasn't listening. My rage clouded everything. What would you rate the beer? Oh, tell us how. Do, how do we rate the beer? <laughs> <laughs> if we were going to be accurate, we would go by a five point scale. We're not going to be. But we're never going to be accurate because what's the point of accuracy? What's the point of like commitment to? prestigious material that's provided being for us. How many yeah, beers ask did our I president. <laughs> six. So how many of those six beers would you personally drink? At this point, I would drink ten of them because they're what's available. <laughs> you better go to the store and buy another six pack because they're going to be two left over. And then leave so two for me. Of this beer? What is the name of the beer again? It is called Goose Fulton Street Blend. It's Goose and it Island. Is Sorry. It doesn't say island. I know it's Goose Island. Okay. It's, it's by Goose, Goose Island, Island. Fulton Street Blend Coffee Ale. And, what and it's described it? as a rich coffee flavor and Where aroma. We did? We did? Yeah, what did you do? Oh, just do it again in case people forgot. Okay, I'm sorry. Go ahead. Do it. Go yes. Like it. from the whole thing? I yes. apologize. It's Goose Island Goose Fulton Street oh, no, Blend, <laughs> <laughs> which is described on the label as rich coffee flavor <laughs> and aroma in a brilliant golden ale. And what's your rating? Out of six. Out of six. What do you six. think? Out of a six. Do I have to take in my emotional context with this answer? No. 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 Just the what taste. The, the initial syrup. taste was off-putting. Yes. Uh, after that, she usually it says that. Oh. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> after that. After that, it becomes more smooth. Like It becomes smoother, more welcoming. You kind of just take it. <laughs> We're still talking about the beer, right? <laughs> So Without we'll... complaining about it. <laughs> yeah. And to everyone's face, you would just say, on a five-point scale, it's worth five. <laughs> it's on a six-point scale. But on a six-point six scale, scale. <laughs> given emotional context of the moment, I would say six. Seriously? If I had a more reasonable <laughs> composure, I would probably give it a three. So you don't care for the beer. <laughs> He's in between. I'm in between. I actually agree with most of your assessment on the beer. <laughs> But I'm going to give it a four. I thought it was horrible the first couple sips, but it grew on me throughout the hour. And I would pro- I would do more. On that being said, 
I gave my father-in-law one of the beers before we left, which there were two there. No, I only brought four out of the six for us to have. Mm-hmm. And he told me he'd rated a 4.5 out of six, to which I figure I'm going to have half a fucking beer when I get home <laughs> waiting for me. So on that, I give it a five. I think it was very good. Nice, smooth. It definitely grew on you as it went. Yeah. You definitely have to give it a chance. Yes. The initial, uh, like for us, said, the first taste is a little much. <laughs> No, that where you just go, I don't know, but it does get better. Nicole? So I really, really like that a lot of different beer companies are starting to make coffee beers that aren't specifically porters or stouts because usually the coffee flavor has been specifically made towards a porter or a stout, the very dark, rich beers. So the fact that a couple of weeks ago we had the Three Daughters Blonde Ale coffee uh, one that was very good. I gave that one a six. I'm going to give this one a five. I thought it was good. I thought it was a little bit lighter than the Three Daughters was. I thought that one had a little bit more of a malty coffee flavor to it, and this one was a little not as heavy. And I'm not a fan of the super heavy, but I no. feel like a coffee should have a little bit of a more prominent body to it than maybe this one did. I thought it was a little too light, but it did have a nice coffee flavor. So I give it a five. But going into what you said, I think having the different roasts now for mm-hmm. coffee, I think expands mixing coffee and beer. So mm-hmm. you can have a blonde roast that you put into an ale quite like this, yeah. or maybe a blonde ale and do a double blonde in a way. Mm-hmm. That's a nice, smooth blonde ale with a coffee taste at the end. Yeah. There are all the possibilities nowadays. So what did you rate this? I'm sorry. Five. Five, okay. Five, because I rated the three daughters. Wait, are we talking about like a five out of five? No, out of six, six. for Oz. Out of a six Still pack. Out of a six. How many out of a six pack would you drink? Are you asking me all over again? No. no. <laughs> all right, well, that ends our They Might Be Giants episode. Let's go into the emails. <laughs> we. Who writes us these e- emails and gives us their names? Darth Potato emailed podcast 42 <laughs> show at gmail.com. It's not me. Wow, Faraz, I can't believe you actually emailed the show. <laughs> Darth Potato said, just wanted to say that I am a mother again for the second time. Congratulations, Faraz. My other son is three, so this should be exciting and terrifying all at the same time. I would just like to say I enjoy the show and often listen at nap time for the kids. Keep up the great episodes. Well, we're glad that you passed nap time with us because I'm sure I that feel like she might put us on to put the kids to sleep. That but could be the thing on the subject. Nicole also naps while we're at that the show. is actually true. We've it had is. to wake her up in prior episodes like this episode. I feel like I, no, I, I think was... she actually did very well this episode. Yeah, there I think we all did that... very well. I say with I, such disdain. I think we did. Do we have any questions, though? We have one question from Holly D. Holly D asks, for the parents in the group, not it, are there any TV or movies that you enjoy watching with your kids? Who wants to start? I know if Roz likes to watch with his kids. What? How to Train Your Dragon. How to Train Your Dragon. The movie? Yeah. One and two. They they make my heart <clears throat> sad. Okay. Especially two. Oh. I've never seen <laughs> yes. one. What? What? No, you're you or your your kids? They must be so deprived. I don't know my kids have seen it either. But you need to. You okay. must. I'll, it's it's. I'll what's, go watch uh, it right now. And Big Hero Six. Yeah, we've seen all the Disney stuff. But not How to all Train Your Dragon, which gave stuff? Big Hero Six like a run for its money with the awards no, I've never season. Seen it. I saw the um uh big uh How to Train Your Dragon on Ice. Oh, how was that? Um, it was okay. Uh, well, you didn't see the movie, so I'm guessing you're going to yeah, say it's okay for that reason. Ice. What about you, JL? Me? Oh, we watched Transformers. <laughs> like Michael Bay? No, like the animated. Like oh, yeah, like disguise. Golden Age and all that? No, I'm trying to get him in the Golden Age, but I'm trying to ease him into it because he's in the whole, like, I love Optimus Prime and Bumblebee, and I can't have him watch the movie yet and see all that kind of stuff. Like, original animated movie. My kids can't watch hand-drawn animation. Come on. Why? I find I hand-drawn know. to be so much better. Yeah, like, I try to show them things like that, and they don't like it. The only hand-drawn animation they seem to be okay with is The Lion King. All right, Aww. I can see that. Lion King's awesome. Love Lion yeah. King. Uh, Moana's big and all that. Love watching that. Um, we're getting into the Marvel thing. And Star Wars. We do love Star Wars. Mine watch uh, Star Wars Rebels. 
and yes. some of the Clone Wars stuff. Like, well, my son loves watching the Ahsoka versus Darth Vader fight. That was a great fight. Though. Oh my god! It like my heart just hurt for her. It's a great fight, though. What about you, Chris? Um, of the stuff that the kids have picked, I can tolerate the Dan Schneider stuff on Nickelodeon. I don't know who that is. Yeah, we did. We a, actually we talked did about a that. Show on it. We did a show. Whoops. He did uh, Drake and Josh. And was I? I was not here for it. Yes, yes you, you were. were. No, I was. Carly and Victorious. Whoops. Um, SpongeBob, I think, is part of that, isn't well, it? Well, we did a Nickelodeon yeah. episode, but we didn't do a Dan Schneider episode. So, but we talked about. It. But we talked okay, about no, it that's in fine. It. But you're making it sound like we did a Dan Schneider episode, but it was a Nickelodeon episode, yeah, which is he, why I would get confused. But he had a whole section in there where he turned Nickelodeon from just being this kids thing into a, a teen and adult thing. Okay, yeah, very instrumental. All right, well, I think that's it. Is that it? I hope so. Very good. Don't forget, um, if you want to read the original script, which is different, a little bit different uh, than this one, it's well worth your dollar. Go to Patreon, uh, just Podcast 42 on Patreon. One dollar, you can read the script. It's awesome. Very well written, very well in depth. I wrote it yes. for a, yes. a month. I, I spent a whole month on I it. I know. You did and it, it's you from did the job. heart. He did it from the heart. I was crying halfway through it. There's a couple, intermittently, there's a couple especially when Chris like told me to this rewrite is, it this, a month after. This episode is truly for Oz's baby. Yeah, it's his topic. He put everything into it. I think there's two paragraphs we're missing, and there's a lot of ten dollars words that we changed around. <laughs> so it's it's very well worth because I need to expand my vocabulary. Well, yes, go, I thought go for it. I thought up another topic for Frost to write a script about, and uh, we will discuss it once we're finished recording. I have a, I have a good one, too, but for Frost. Chris is might... already on board, so Frost yeah. is going to have a lot yeah, of work yeah. to do. Five nights at Freddy's. I did a haunted house of theirs <laughs> once. That's not it. <laughs> I did a haunted house of theirs, but it wasn't really a haunted house of theirs. It yeah. was when I went to the RTX convention in Austin a couple of years ago, and it's basically like you walked in and... The scientists were talking to you in a room, and then they're like, oh, my gosh, they're here. And then they usher you out of the room, and that was the end of the haunted house. This is Five Nights at Freddy's base? Yeah. With a scientist? Yeah. Okay. Yeah, I know. Interesting. It was weird. I don't know anything about Five Nights at Freddy's, but I know that it was their haunted house. And we waited, like, almost an hour to get in, and it was, like, a five-minute kind of presentation okay. type well, thing. Well, usually it takes place in a pizza place. It was like not- a Chuck E. Cheese. I will That's confirm. I then I will. Okay. Then I will confirm with my sister what it was. She will know for sure. Okay. Were you drinking? Always. Okay. Okay. All right. Well, where can you find us, Nicole? Why doesn't anybody else ever want to do it? You can find us on Spreaker first off, it's and knows. <laughs> I have no idea. Most That's importantly, I mean. find us on Spreaker. We really appreciate if you listen to us on there because they do give us a little teeny tiny bit of money. But if you want to listen to us anywhere else, we are on iTunes podcast. Um, Google Play, Stitcher, Podcast Garden, SoundCloud. Everything but Spotify. Everything but Spotify. They don't want us for some reason, <laughs> even though we have really funny Why? conversations about pop culture items, and I guess they really don't care. <laughs> you know, you were telling me that I was costing I feel... you sponsors earlier. Was that one of them? Huh? Yes, you cost us Spotify. <laughs> oh, I feel like I should have known this, but I didn't do my homework. What? Nobody ever does their homework. I should have done my homework. About what? Did Any you of this? do your homework? Then say you did your homework. <laughs> oh, I, I missed the song. Did, <laughs> <laughs> oh, you wanted me to sing the song? Yeah, of that's course right. you I did. I set you up to do the set song. Set me up. Because I know how much you love doing the homework song. I love the homework song. Are we ending now? We're ending. We're Can done. We end with the, may the force be with you. Sure. And also with you. In unison? Okay, ready? One, we have to two. introduce ourselves first, we and then the we outro. say it. You want to say your names and then do May the Force be with you? I mean, that makes sense, okay. because All we right. can't just end it without saying our names. Well, we weren't. We we're going to say our names. All right. It seems weird to say, so, may the Force be with you, and then our names. Oh, okay. Yeah. Doing so it you know way, what? Woman. Chris, I think you should lead it off. Yeah. My name is Christopher DeVos. I'm Nicole Fasone. I am the Sith Lord, J.L. Tros. I am Jedi Master Faraz, A. Hey. Madonna. All right. And everybody... <laughs> May yeah, the, the force, force be, be with, with you. you. They might be giants rocks. <laughs> I hate you. <laughs> Bye. You are no longer listening to Podcast 42. Some of the stuff you just heard might have been embellished, made up, or just plain incorrect. In other words, don't use this show to write a book report with. You will get a bad grade. Just like all the hosts.
but I'm not done yet. JL's Beer Cooler is written and performed by Cremo. Cremo is an award-winning actor and musician. For all things Cremo, including more great music, visit Cremo.com. That's spelled C-R-A-Y-M-O. He is on Twitter at Cremo. Facebook, just search Cremo Music. And also on YouTube under, you guessed it, Cremo.